How are we doing out there guys? I'm going to talk today about the science of stopping power. So I meant to put this video out when we did the other one on the how statistics lie, but kind of got busy uh, just being sexy and living life and whatnot and sort of hadn't got around to it. So um, going to go over the physiological um, points that matter about our stopping power. We're going to stay up front, so if you guys aren't going to watch the whole freaking video and set of videos, whenever it comes to actual physiological stopping power, the most important thing is always going to be shot placement. If you don't hit it, it doesn't matter what damage it could potentially do. So always shot placement. Number two is going to be opening multiple wounds. So more holes is better, always. And number three is going to be bigger, heavier, fatter, faster moving rounds do more damage than their counterpart. Now, how much more damage they do depends on a lot of factors. If we're talking pistol rounds and modern hollow points, not really much difference between them, but bigger, fatter, faster uh, is better when it comes to that. So we're talking about physiological stopping power. So we can break this down into three main uh, categories that we can talk about. So number one is neural, number two is hydraulic, and number three is mechanical. Okay, so when we're talking neural or neurological stopping power, we're talking about the central nervous system. So we're talking about two things. We're talking about the brain, all right, and we're talking about the spinal cord within the spine. Okay, so contrary to what you see in a lot of movies, what you hear a lot of people say, there is only one off switch in the body, and that is the brain stem, which is located basically through this dude's nose, all right, and right at the back and the base of the brain back there. So it controls the most primal functions of the brain, which are basically related strictly to survival. That is the only off switch. So when we're talking about getting a neurological stop uh, to the brain stem, that's when you guys always see the fatal T or the fatal triangle come in. We're talking between the eyes right here and down to the nose. So if you guys have seen, um, you know, pictures uh, in books and things like that, or you've seen freaking, you know, Shakespeare's Macbeth where he's got the skull, right? The nose, all right, only has a small amount of bone up in the top here, and it's cartilage on the tip. And so this is basically a big gaping hole. So that's why the center of that fatal T, fatal triangle, whatever you want to call it, is on the nose, because the round makes it to that point. There's very little resistance other than soft tissue um, to go through and to actually get into the brain. So we get that shot straight through. We hit the brain stem. That's the only real guaranteed bang fud, uh, you know, type of shot that we've got. Okay, so the second part of that, um, the spinal cord, all right, so obviously contained within the vertebrae of the spine. The vertebrae are thick and tough, and their job is to protect the spinal cord, quite obviously. So when we talk about the spine, um, I'm going to oversimplify for any of you guys who are actual physiological majors and stuff out there. When we talk about how the body innervates or how the nerves and the controls actually go out to the body, basically what we're talking about is at a given level of the spine, the nerves go straight out and they control and send signals to that level of the body. So for example, the spinal cord, even with um, the top of my sternum right here, the nerves go out and so basically it controls everything at that level or above. Same thing going down. Once you get to the hips, obviously, spine doesn't run all the way to your feet, so the bottom of your spine uh, sends the traffic out to your legs. So what that means is if we get a shot on the spine that severs the spinal cord, at the level of that shot, everything below cannot get traffic from the brain. And so the easy way to think of that is like if you've got a garden hose. So you've got it hooked up to your spigot, you turn it on. If you go all the way to the very end and you poke a hole, you get a little bit of water that comes out of there, but there's still water in the rest of the hose. If you come right up by the faucet, right up by the spigot, and you poke a hole in that, all right, now you're going to get no water or almost no water down to the end of the hose. And that's the same thing we're talking about with the spinal cord. So that's why we always try to get our shots not only centered in the upper chest and to the face, but centered in the body. So potentially any shot to the spinal cord uh, or to the spinal column that severs the spinal cord in this region here can stop traffic. So that in and of itself does not guarantee a kill, but if we sever the spinal cord high, uh, you probably, you know, maybe have heard of people or have talked to people who have been paralyzed from car accidents and things like that, where if you sever the spinal cord in this chest level, it can uh, affect or stop the ability of the body to control the respiratory rate, the breathing, the heart rate, stuff like that. And so it can and definitely does kill people. But uh, what we're talking about, there's an actual neurological stop where the body loses the ability to control whatever is below where that's severed. Okay, so now the third thing that can happen when we get a neurological stop is just the exact same thing that happens in boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, MMA, football, whatever. We take a shot to the dome that is not fatal or not immediately fatal on that instant, but it knocks the person out. So that's why uh, when we talk about taking shots to the head or taking shots to the face, we want to center them uh, on that soft palate or on that nasal cavity right here. But if your shots go high and they hit the forehead, very 
thick bone, hard bone up here. Same thing with the top of the head. Um, and when we come to the back of the skull, the body is designed to protect its vital organs, including the brain and such. So if the round hits that, it may skip off. It may not actually penetrate enough to kill the person outright, but the sheer um, shock and uh, the wound that it caused can definitely knock the person out, which will in turn uh, you know, be an actual neurological stop in that point. So again, that's the basics. Three main ways that we can get a neurological stop. Center, uh, we got central nervous system straight through the brain stem. We got severing the spinal cord, and then we've got a shot to the noggin that knocks the dude out.